So you have decided or are considering booking your very first Virgin Voyages cruise. I am super excited for you, but let me tell you something. There are mistakes that you can make that can impact your entire experience. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the biggest mistakes I see first time Virgin Voyagers make and how you can avoid them. So stay tuned. The biggest mistake I see first time travelers make on Virgin Voyages is expecting it to be like any other cruise. This cruise line and this ship was created to be different from anything you've ever done. You can't compare it to any other line because everything is just totally different. So some of the biggest differences you'll see, of course, are that it's adults only. And that is my favorite, favorite feature of Virgin Voyages. Now, some of y'all be thinking that adults only means naughty, but no, it's really not like that. Like, yeah, are there some risque things? Of course, but it's definitely not a quote unquote swingers cruise or anything like that. It's just a totally different vibe and there are absolutely no children around. Other big differences are that there is no main dining room. So you're not gonna find like one area that people typically will gravitate towards and you see like the dancing and things like that. Um, that may happen in a main dining room setting, they don't have that. There's also no buffet, but there are some great things that change out for that. And you definitely have plenty of food options. There's no shortage there. Another one of the biggest differences I noticed with Virgin Voyages is that the entertainment is different from what you would see on a typical cruise line. Of course, with it being adults only, you don't have to cater to children and it doesn't have to be family friendly shows. So like I said, you do have that more of a risque kind of approach to shows, but there also aren't like stage productions that are like theatrical or anything like that. Like I said, it is totally different. Okay, so the second biggest mistake I see first timers on this cruise line make is expecting to be able to do everything. You guys, these events overlap and that is by purpose. <laughs> like they, they literally planned it like that. So the goal is for you to come back and be able to experience the ship again. And I highly recommend it. After four cruises, I can tell you, no experience for me has been the same. Um, I have at least two more cruises coming this year with them and I'm looking forward to both of them. So don't expect to be able to do everything. Now there are over 20 restaurants included on this ship and so naturally you are not gonna be able to go to all 20 restaurants in the four, five, or six days that you're on the ship or even seven. Another thing that you probably won't be able to do is attend every show. Um, sometimes the show times overlap with dinners and you know you just would prefer to try the dinner or vice versa and that is okay. So just you know don't get upset about it. Just know like you're not gonna be able to do everything in one trip. Number three is the most important thing that I can tell you about a first timer and the biggest mistake I see first timers make is not understanding that Virgin Voyages is heavily, heavily, heavily dependent upon the app. So they created an app and that is the app that you're gonna use to book your restaurants, your shows, um, it's going to be how you register for your time to come to the port. I mean, literally everything is done in this app. So if you don't wrap your mind around the concept that you are going to need to A, download this app before you get to the cruise port. So do it while you're at home and B, that you're going to need to use this throughout your entire trip. Um, you are definitely going to have a difficult experience because you're not going to be able to book anything. So on top of not getting used to the fact that you're going to need this app, the second piece of this is understanding that you need to go in and book your restaurants 45 days before you're sailing. So the restaurants will be available to book through that app from home 45 days before you actually take your trip. And for me, I literally am up midnight waiting for that 45 day mark so that I can book the restaurants that I want. Now, like I was telling you guys, you cannot expect to do everything while you're on any particular sailing with them. But if there are some things that you definitely don't want to miss, you want to go ahead and book those dinners in the app. And now a safe time um, to book dinners. So typically they have options where you can book from like 5 p.m. to 9, 9.30ish. Um, a safe time would be, of course, that 5 p.m. slot. I would say because um, the shows are typically going to be somewhere in the 7 or 9 o'clock range typically. And so if you go to dinner at 5, even though that's pretty early, that is going to help you to not miss any of the shows. Um, you also can book your dinners closer to the mm, 7 and 8 time slot. 
Um, for me, the most important dinner for me to book is on Scarlet Night. So you will be able to see in the app whenever your Scarlet Night is, which is the night that you wear red. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the next point. But um, I'd like to definitely have a dinner on that day. And if there's a special occasion, like say you're celebrating your birthday or something like that, you want to definitely get whichever one of those specialty restaurants you want. Now, one thing to understand is that, like I mentioned, there are over 20 restaurants on the ship. But there are six specialty restaurants, and those six are the ones that you'll need to book. Anything outside of that, you can definitely get. There is no shortage of food. If you don't book restaurants, you'll still have options, and there's still the potential for you to walk up and get a reservation. It just may be difficult to do. And so of those six specialty restaurants, there is Pink Agave, which is the Mexican-themed restaurant. There is Gambe, which is Korean barbecue. Extra Virgin, which is Italian um let's see i'm naming them off the top of my head the wake which is the steakhouse and the last one is which one am i forgetting razzle dazzle which is kind of the vegan ford um and now it's like i feel like it's leaning so far away from vegan it's kind of like the fun restaurant so one tip for booking restaurants that i would give you guys is that um the wake and razzle dazzle can be booked for brunch or dinner so that can kind of help you to spread around the restaurants you get to try because if you don't try the wake for dinner, you can try it for brunch. If you don't try razzle dazzle for dinner, you can try that for brunch and vice versa. So um, those are the two options that are going to be flexible. The other ones of those six specialty restaurants are only dinner restaurants. And while we're still talking about the app, probably the most important thing that I can tell you that will impact your experience as a first timer on Virgin Voyages is once you first get on the ship, and I mean like the first second, I mean step on and literally step to the side, and connect to the ship's Wi-Fi. Because like I was mentioning, in that app, that is how you're going to book everything as far as events. So they have like some fun workout classes like the bungee class. There's like a um, class where you like work out doing like bungee exercises. I have yet to be able to get on that um, in four sailings because it just has not been my top priority. But the next time I get on Virgin, that is gonna be the first thing I book. So those reservations, there are things that you can book before your cruise and there are things that you have to book once you get on the ship. And so that's why you want to go ahead and log into the ship's Wi-Fi and begin to browse those events before you get into like relaxing or eating or doing anything else. There's also a sailor services desk, which is located near Pink Agave. I think that's deck six. I'll link it down here exactly what deck is on. Um, but there are also typically people that are going to be standing around as soon as you get on the ship that can help you with booking anything that you weren't able to book before you got on board. So if there's a particular restaurant that you know you want to do on a certain day, definitely as soon as you get on board meet with sailor services and get them to help you to book that restaurant or book those events this also goes for shore things which are your excursions so like i said everything has to be done through that app but once you get on the ship you can get with the staff and they can help you to book um, those events and that is going to be the biggest tip i can give you guys in this video because it will make or break your experience if you're not able to do the things you want to do and you kind of get stuck just kind of floating around and trying to figure out what to do um if you don't book when you first get on there's a good chance you won't get to do the things that are high priority to you the next mistake i see travelers on virgin voyages make is not bringing the proper attire now this one really isn't a huge deal but i think for you it kind of like curates the experience so the big events that you're going to have on those sailings are going to be a pajama party which is going to happen the first night so it's going to be of course adults only an adults only pajama party it happens night one around 10 45 to 11 o'clock um is the start time on that and you can bring any type of pajamas you want and wear them. So um, I have seen everything from like sexy lingerie to like covered up onesies to like funny outfits. It can be whatever you want it to be. And whether you're traveling solo or with people, this is one of the fun ones that you definitely don't want to miss. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite events on the ship. So um, definitely bring your pajamas and plan for something that you don't mind being out partying and dancing and seeing in. Now, the next event you want to dress for is for Scarlet Night. And Scarlet Night can be as dressed up or down as you want to be. But the theme is red. So anything red. For men, I've seen things as simple as bringing like a red t-shirt, 
um, of course, red suits or, you know, whatever you want to do there. And for women, you can get like all the way dressed up in ball gowns if you want to. You can wear like a cute little strappy maxi dress. That's probably what I see the most of. Um, or you can just do kind of like this outfit, like a little red romper. Um, so Scarlet Night is like the big theme night on the ship. And if you were to do a comparison of Scarlet Night to a, or Virgin Voyages Scarlet Night to another cruise line, this would be kind of the equivalent of an elegant night, but it's not as dressy. I would say that. Um, and like I said, you can wear ball gowns if you want to, but I will be honest. In my four cruises, I have not seen people wear like the long sequin ball gowns like you would see on um, another line, you know, for those nights. But this is a night that if you want to get dressy, this is the night to do it. And we have reached the last biggest mistake I see first timers on Virgin Voyages make. And that is booking too much the first day. The first day of your vacation when you embark, this really needs to be the time that you just get the lay of the ship. This needs to be the day that you kind of develop what you want to do in your mind. Um, so I've seen people that like come in and they're like, oh, I'm going to book this event. I'm going to book dinner. I'm going to book like back to back to back. And it kind of stresses you out and you really miss, you know, a lot of the first day events by booking everything ahead of time. Um, so usually for me on the first day, I don't book an official dinner because I don't want to have to sit down in a restaurant and eat. Typically dinners are going to be anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. And so that is going to lock you out of, of course, like I said, the pajama party starts at 1045. If you do a late dinner, um, they're going to do a show the first night. So one of the entertainment options, you can catch it the first night if you choose to. There is, of course, the sell-away party, which you cannot miss. Like, do not miss the sell-away party because they do complimentary champagne. And it's just a good time to, like, get to meet the Happenings cast, which is what would be kind of like a cruise director. So you're going to meet the people that are going to be hosting the events on the ship. You're going to see, um, like, the ship sail off and celebrate, like, your trip beginning. So you definitely don't want to miss that. And the other biggest thing that they have that first day is the first solo traveler meetup. And I have shown this before. I'll insert some clips, but during this meetup, you can meet other solo travelers on the trip if you are solo. And they will typically um, kind of do like icebreaker questions and things like that and then head over to that sail away party together. And from there, they will typically do a dinner together the first night. I've never attended the dinner just because um, my first day, I'm typically like trying to get the lay of the land and move around and everything and figure out what I want to do. But if you want to do that dinner that first day, it's fantastic. It's a good chance for you to meet people and actually sit down, have a meal with them and figure out, you know, do you want to be by yourself on this solo trip or do you want to make those connections? So I definitely recommend keeping your schedule open for that. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video of the biggest mistakes I see first timers make on Virgin Voyages. If you have any questions about Virgin Voyages, definitely leave them below in the comments. If you have ideas for what you want me to talk about next, leave that in the comments as well. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!